Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. Next up, we need to get a photo description using a flow. So what we're going to do is create a cloud flow to get us a photo description using an AI prompt. To get started, we'll go up here and click on Actions, Add an Action, then we're going to click on New Action and New Power Automate Flow. This opens a new tab, drops us into a cloud flow, and here you can see that it has both a trigger, run a flow from Copilot, and then respond to Copilot is the final action or response. And so in the middle, we're just going to put in what we want. And so the first thing we want to do is we're going to search for Dataverse again. And then we're going to download a file or an image. For our table name, we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to choose our incidents photos, like so. For the Rose Global Unique Identifier, we don't have that here, right? So we need to get that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here to run a flow from Copilot. We're going to add an input, a text input, and we're going to set the name to photo row ID, good of the ID for the photo to retrieve. So this will help on the other side with our agent because it'll have a better idea of what flow is looking for. And so now that we have that, now we go back to here. And so then here, we're going to click on the lightning bolt for dynamic content. And then from our run of flow from Copilot Action, we have photo row ID. Then for column name, we hit the drop down and we want photo of the incident, right? So that's the name of the image column in my Dataverse table. So that will get the bits and bytes that make up the image back. And now what we want to do is we want to find out what's going on in that image. So what we're going to do is we're going to press add again here. And this time under AI Builder, we're going to say create text with GPT using a prompt. We'll choose that. And then for the prompt, we want to do a new custom prompt. So we'll click that. We're going to give our prompt a name. How about incident report photo description? That seems like something I remember later. And so for my prompt, what I'm going to do is something like review the image. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and say, add an image or document preview. It is going to switch the model to GPT 4.0. Okay. And then here we'll call it photo image. And then we can say, upload an image or document. So this is just for the sample. So we can do a test in a moment. So we'll go ahead and click on that. I will choose that same milk photo. And then we'll say, add input. Okay. And remember that image is not stored with the prompt. That image is just here. For this test session, if we come back and test later, we'd have to manually add it again. But there you go. So review the image, boom, and provide a detailed description. I'm not going to read all this to you, but then notice here I get an example. And then finally, I want to do the scene, right? So you can always hit pause and read it if you want. But also keep in mind that while I'm just pasting this in because I've done this, like the first time it probably took me an hour of little changes. Like I kept massaging this prompt to get the exact output I wanted. So don't just think, oh, Shane just put that there super fast. It must be that easy. It is that easy to get the first response, but you kind of will continue to revisit these prompts until you get them the way you want. So let's see how I did. So we'll say test prompt. And now we're waiting on it to generate. And this is just a good chance for you to make sure that, like, hey, this looks right. And you can see that I can explain the office environment with spilled milk. It paints a picture of the background like I asked it to. And then it kind of says, hey, here's what I think, right? Like everything seems okay, right? Like not, not too bad, right? Spill needs cleaned up, but it's not bad, right? So I feel like that's what I'm after here. So looks good to me. We're going to go ahead and say save. And so then now there is my prompt. And then for the photo image, once again, the dynamic content, and then the image content from our download action. This is all just normal flow power apps -y stuff, right? Like there's nothing Copilot Studio specific about it other than the trigger and the response are going to Copilot Studio, but there's nothing new to learn here, right? So pretty straightforward. All right, and then next we need to go down here to respond to Copilot, right? We got to send the output back. So we're going to say output text. We're going to set the name to photo description, and then the value to respond with, a little lightning bolt, and from our create text with GPT using a prompt, we're going to send the text back. And then a description of the output, once again, trying to help our agent do a better job, a description of the photo from the incident report. So, right, painting that picture again. All right, and then now we want to rename this thing, so we're going to change the name to something like incident response photo description, and then now we're going to say publish. Now we'll probably get a warning because we don't have a content approval step in here. So, 
having a human in the loop to do approvals and things like that are always a good idea, but we're not going to build that today. So we're just going to ignore this by closing it out. And finally, it's all published and there's that warning again. All right. So now let's switch back over to Copilot Studio. And so now we want to refresh. Now you might see your flow here. If you don't, you could search or up here in the little ellipses, we could say, hey, just show me flows. And then look right there at the top of the list, there is my flow. So different ways of finding it, whatever works well for you. So we're going to go ahead and say that. We're just going to stick with the names that we gave it. So we'll say add action. And then now we need to go back into there. We're going to click on inputs. And our one input is sitting here, photo row ID. And so then it's now it's like, hey, what information should I fill in here? And so we want it to fill it in automatically. And let's just see how well I did on my first try, right? Like that description, you might have to manipulate it. You might want to be more specific, less specific, but let's just see how well I did there. So we'll go ahead and say save. Now we'll go back here to our overview and then we'll say edit. And now for step two, get the photo description using the action incident response photo description. And that's the name of our flow that we just added. So let's see how we did. We're going to go ahead and say save. And now that it's saved, we'll scroll down here to our triggers. We'll click on the little test tube or test beaker. I don't know, whatever that thing is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say start testing, right? This will just pass in that prompt from earlier when we did that practice run. I don't have to keep creating fake incidents to, to try this out. And there we go. It brings us to our activity map and we should start to see our different actions take place. Just as we've seen before, this is all of our different data. And then now we should see our fourth one. There's our photo ID that is correct. And so now if we see some words going into here, look at that. So all of our information is coming in. Now it's a little bit confused at this point around, Hey, what else can I do? Because we have those other instructions. Remember over here, we didn't delete out three, four, five, and six, which we should have, but that's all right. So it failed, but we saw that one and two worked correctly. So I feel really good that we're doing what we needed. So I think we'll call this one done. And next time we come back, we'll talk about saving the photo description back to Dataverse.